Right then guys, so now it's time, everything's painted, cleaned, done. Now it's time to fit the drive shaft hmm, back in. Ah, trust me, this ain't gonna be easy. Right, so you've got to use special grease. It's got to be molybdenum, blah 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 blah. It's basically black. So apply it liberally. I've already put some on. This is me just having a second or third attempt at putting it in. Just as well, really, because I forgot to film. So what they say is that you feed it in, basically. They do say it's easier if you do it in gear. So I've locked it in gear. This is why we've tied all the centre stand, because I've got to push it forward. And yeah, it ain't fucking easy. And it's heavy. And there's absolutely no way that's going in. So you can see, guys, this is the ball leg. There's always one. I thought this one was going too well. Everything's gone our way. Now I've got to try and. Yeah. So we've got to go up there, see? Doesn't really help you. Hey right, guys, I don't know if you'll be able to see this. Hang on, let's see. Now down there, there's the shaft that it goes in, obviously. But the shaft's at a slight angle. I'm just trying to let you see, but the phone gets in the way. Let's see if I can get a torch. Right, there's a brought a torch, but I don't know if you'll be able to see still. So down there, you've got a shaft, and it has to join that shaft. Problem is, that shaft kind of at an angle trying to line it up horizontally like that it's on the tilt and trying to rotate the wheel at the same time to line the splines up so that as you rotate the wheel millimeters at a time it'll eventually find the spline and you can push it in and the only way I can get 
anywhere to put purchase on it is to sit at the rear of the bike. The wheel's not fastened on. I haven't got the axle ball through or anything. It's just shoved on the splines. That one's just done. So that's them all talked up to 65 newton meters. The only way I did it was by putting the wheel on, propping, chopping, chopping the wheel. If you had two people, it wouldn't be as bad. But just trying to get them in. Well, it's not making any noises rolling it in neutral. I won't be able to roll it in gear. So. As far as I'm aware, it's all good. So I'll take that wheel back off. Yeah, one thing I've really struggled with is the amount of room. I didn't leave myself enough. I should have had more room because I'm ducking under the panniers all the time. But yeah, hey. So these splines here now need a liberal coating of the old Molly Baba one. It's uh you know you get the right stuff because when you look at it like that see it's as black as tar and it feels very carbony so yeah well I think I've earned a fag after that one boys so I'm gonna stop you here get me breath back because that killed me. It was hard work. So yeah, I'm gonna get my best back. I'm a bit tidy up because I've got shit everywhere now. Um, and then carry on. Alright guys, so you remember I was painting that little bit of plastic. Well that's what that little bit of plastic there is for. This bit here. See it comes lower than the swing arm. So any shit that gets flung off the wheel now remembering the wheels rotating that way so any shit that gets flung off the wheel now is not going to sit on top of the swing arm and rust it out it's going to hit this and drip down this is plastic it's only zip tied on but yeah um, that's the idea of that nobody sees it but it's going to save me a load of work in the future because I shouldn't ever have to take this off again at least that is the plan um, these splines here on the wheel yeah we can grease them up every time we change the wheel but I don't think I'll be in a rush to do that one on the input shaft there because honestly honestly it was a ball leg but this here it's plastic so it's never gonna rot nice and secure so we shouldn't have any dramas and you can see it there, fastened up the top, zip ties, and then fastened actually round the swing arm with cable ties, zip ties, whatever you want to call them, tie wraps. Why does something have three names? Zip ties, cable ties, and tie wraps. Right then, guys, so it's time to lube up them splines. Just be generous. Apparently so. I've cleaned them all first. I don't suppose you can have too much. Just don't get any on your new tyre. Alright guys, so I'll give it a nice liberal coating of grease all the way around, making sure that can't see any of the splines. Don't know if it's right, but I'm working on the assumption that it's better to have too much than not enough. So I reckon I've got to put the wheel in first. But I need to sort my shit out. 
There you go, get on there. Right, so now I've got to try and lift the wheel up, put it on the splines. Put the spacer in, that one, that goes in there like so. That's it. That comes up there like so. That comes in there. Job's a good one. Got a bit of clean up. That's all right. All right it's 27 mil on the left side. 22 mil. No, uh, 22 mil on the right side. I think. Yeah. Give it a spin. Can't hear now because there's a poxy truck driving past. Right, wait for the truck to go. Right, give it a spin. Hi right, guys, so the setting for the uh, axle nut is 120 newton meters. As you can see, I've talked mine down to 120 newton meters. So 27 mil nut this side 27 mil and on the other side 22 mil just the old tin copper slip and then wind it in so 12 mil spanner doesn't have to be super tight here you go adequate check the wheel yes all spinning well. So now we're back to the calipers. Have a look at this then. How does this go? So our first job, I reckon, is put the pads in. So just a little bit of copper slip on the back of that. I'll just help it stick a little bit, hopefully. And that goes in that orientation copper slip on the back, that orientation on top of the thing that splits the disc. I don't know if you can see that in there, look, like so. All right. Now this one goes in the base of there. This is our caliper mountain pin. The threaded end obviously goes in where the thread is. All right, but before we do that, we need to do two things. So on the back of the pads, on the back of the pads we need some copper slip. Don't have to smother it. Alright, now be careful where you put these because you don't want to contaminate the front of the braking material. Same on the other one. Oh, helps if you get some on your fingers. All right, the pin itself. Normal grease. Doing a nice liberal coating. Except this time we're going to take off any excess. three pairs of hands. So we start pushing that through and then we put our first pad on. Get your second pad. And that goes in like so. Right, so you should have a gap in between so you just wind that in. Doesn't need to be tight this guys. Oh, so it has to be tight but not to the point 
where we're breaking our necks to tighten it. Okay, you've got your little grub screw to put in there as well, look. So just lift that one up. And then you've got your little grub screw. And that just goes in there like so. Bit fiddly this. There you go. We got it. That's just nipped up. Try and keep your pads apart. Now, if you remember guys, you had your, your big one, your little one. Big one at the front, little one at the back. So, put a bit of grease on these. Just on the slidey bits there. Because that's all it needs. Just help it slide. And the same on this one, which is the opposite way around. The slidey bits at the bottom, look. Remember, the big one goes to the front. Right, there you go. It's, it's 12 mil at the back, guys. Nice <laughs> 14 mil is the fucking tricky one. Torque setting for these is only about 26 newton meters or something. Just pumping the brake pedal, bring that piston out. Morning, guys, welcome back to Bike 1K. Um, it's day three, and as you can see, we've pretty much all got it back together again now. Back wheels on. Drive shafts on, obviously, back wheels on, everything's torqued down. I've still got to put some diff oil in the final drive. I did fit my new lights yesterday on both sides, and they're super bright. There you go. So you can see they're super bright and a nice amber orange light. They're all good. So it's fit the back exhaust, or fit the exhaust, put some diff oil in, and then we have to take it for a run, and then take it for a retest on the MOT. Uh, on the retest, they should only test the things that it failed for. So in my case, it should be check the rear tire and check the back brakes not sticking. So you'll put it on a brake roller for that. Um, but yeah, that's it. Nice easy day. Crack on.